Hey guys, it's Alex. I've been getting a lot of questions about recording dialogue and how to match different microphones together, so today I want to talk about how to make a lavalier mic sound like a boom mic. Now, before I get started, I wanted to mention a project that I'm going to be helping out on real quick. A director from Japan is doing a documentary that centers around childhood trauma and mental health in Japan, centering kind of around the Fukushima disaster. I think stories like this are really important to tell, and as somebody who's part Japanese, it really resonated with me. So I've put the link to the project's Kickstarter in the description. Check it out if you have a minute, share it with anybody who might be interested. All right. Love and boom microphones. One of the primary focuses of dialogue processing and mixing in film and television is to get every line that's spoken sound like it's consistently from the same place, the same microphone, the same take. So the way they do that on set is having a location sound recordist using a variety of boom microphones or lavalier microphones to get coverage across every speaking role. The boom microphone usually sounds the most natural, it's got the best representation of the space that they're in, and it sounds the most kind of cinematic in its capturing of the voice. Lav microphones tend to sound a little less pleasant, but they're great if you don't have the coverage to swing a boom microphone quickly enough if talent's far away from each other, or if you need to isolate a character completely and have direct control over just their speech. However, not all microphones sound the same, and so they require a little bit of processing to get consistent within each other. Now, the boom microphone that I'm using is a Sennheiser 8040, and I really like how it sounds just naturally. It sweetens the right frequencies to me, it kind of rejects or doesn't, doesn't really pronounce the frequencies that I don't like, and it has a nice cinematic but still natural sound. Whereas this lav that I'm wearing is a DPA 4061, and it's one of the higher quality lavs you can get, but listening to it in comparison, it really doesn't sound as good. It's got a little bit of boxiness and kind of low mid buildup that isn't really flattering, and it's kind of dark sounding. It doesn't have the top end brightness that you might expect from a boom. The boom also captures a little bit more natural a representation of the space that I'm in, so the reverb sounds a little bit more pleasant, whereas the lav doesn't have that same feeling. It sounds, again, sort of contained and just a little weirdly boxy. So how do I get these sounding more like each other? Now, I've covered the tools that I'm going to use to do this a little bit more in depth in a couple of other videos, so if you want any more detail, go check those out. But the first thing I'm going to reach for is my equalizer. I can immediately roll off the frequencies that I'm just not going to need from this microphone. So I'm going to put a high pass filter at about 60 hertz to get all the low energy that I just don't want to don't want to deal with completely away, and I'm going to roll off the top end at about 18 kilohertz cuz there's really nothing above that that we're going to need for dialogue. Next, I want to deal with the low-mid boxiness and kind of muddiness that I'm hearing from this microphone, because it's really distracting from the rest of the frequencies. So I'm going to use the EQ sweeping technique that I covered in one of my other videos to find the resonant boxiness that I really don't like, and I'm going to take that down to whatever sounds right. And don't be afraid to push past 3, 6, even 10 dB sometimes to get the sound you need. It's really not about the number, it's about how it sounds and whether it sounds good. Now that I've cleared out a lot of that low mid kind of muddy boxiness, I can tell I need a lot more brightness in this microphone. So I can do a wide band, just gentle push up of all the top end frequencies, and that'll give me a nice bright clear sounding dialogue recording. After that, I'll use that EQ sweeping technique again to find some of the harsher, more resonant frequencies in my voice through this microphone. But since I treated my low mids first and then the top end, it frees up a lot of the distracting frequencies so that I can center in on just what I want to take out. I'll use my compressor to kind of even out levels and get the best dynamics to my ears, and then I'll engage my de as well to kind of remove some of the sibilance and, and kind of clicky stuff that I don't really want jumping out in my dialogue recordings. And after that, the real trick to this is adding a tiny touch of short room reverb on top of the lav, because again, the boom microphone, if you listen to it now, has a little bit more of a better representation of the space, whereas just the dry lavalier, even with a little bit of processing that we've done, isn't quite as pleasant sounding. So adding a touch of that short reverb is going to make it fill in just that little bit of space and sound natural like it was recorded right alongside the boom. Now, all of this is best done within a DAW, but if you're only working in video software, all of these skills are going to translate. You just got to make sure that with the reverb specifically, dial the wet or the, the reverberant signal down so it's just a touch. You don't want to be, you know, swimming in reverberant reflections and frequencies instead of having a natural clear sound. 
And now listening back to the boom microphone signal that sounds kind of the natural cinematic way that I'd like, and then comparing it to our new processed lav signal, those are way, way closer together and sound much more consistent within each other than our dry unprocessed lav signal did. Using this workflow is gonna give you a lot more flexibility in cutting scenes together and making mics match so that it doesn't jump around from take to take, or at the very least, you're gonna get a much better lav sound than just dry straight out of the box. And that's basically it. Hopefully this video was useful. If you liked it, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, come follow me over on Instagram at AXK, and thanks for watching.